Is that true? It's true. Congratulations. Just so you know, I talked to Coach Rizal last week. Doing great. He was in uh, Tidewater area, and he sounded great on the telephone. Tidewater goes in his heels? No, I didn't know that. I'm, I am going to call him tomorrow, though. <laughs> yeah. What was your least favorite part of the second half tonight? Uh, play of the older players. Um, you know, we talked about it, you know, when you play games like this, and I've always believed very, being transparent and honest, when you look at the, you take Jonas, who, by the way, I thought played a terrific basketball game, really happy with our young guys. We we talked a lot about those guys being ready to play, and they haven't played much. I thought they were good, but you go back, I think the starters were four for 23. I think they had 11 of the 19 turnovers. And the way they came out and started the second half, honestly, it's uh, just extremely disappointing because they should have come out with the same way we started the game. We talked about it, obviously. We talked about it as a natural letdown if it can be. And it goes back to being consistent, discipline, mental toughness, all that. And, and we, didn't, that's, we didn't get it done in the second half. And uh, we talked from the beginning about these guys being the kind of leaders that we wanted them to be. And it goes back to consistency. We've got to know what we're going to get from those older guys for 40 minutes, not just for 20 minutes. Ryan Rock, I don't think Josiah came back in after he gave up that low by about 15 minutes left in the game. Uh, you talked about disappointment in the, the leaders that just a minute ago, but what specifically with Josiah went to that? Well, again, it's, it's, he, he's a, a, he, Santi, and uh, I mean, they've been here longer than anybody. I mean, they're the two guys that I really count on and talk to them about it, and, but they, they weren't ready. And, and again, I would tell you, I've told you this before, I think those minutes are precious. And, I, and, I, and I'm telling you, I don't care who it is, they're gonna, if they're gonna be out there, they're gonna appreciate them and play. And uh, from the get going in the second half, uh, it just wasn't good basketball. But again, my biggest disappointment, we were wanting to obviously get it stretched out to where we could get those younger guys on the court as a group, because they had done a good job. Uh, I thought playing with the older guys in the first half and getting them out there as a group and trying to get them a, an extended run to let them know how hard it is to play as hard as we expect them to play for a long period of time is really part of team building to let them know that you, know, you appreciate how hard those guys play. But uh, it did happen and it falls again uh, where our older guys uh, just didn't do what we expect them to do night in and night out. Coach, it's been basically two weeks since you told us you're going to be able to, you're going to develop some post offense and you'll be able to throw it inside of Jonas. And he's been a different player four games since then. How, high, how much higher is your ceiling if he's played at this level? Well, again, it goes to consistency and, and again, uh, getting the ball there. And he's going to have to, we keep talking about his space on the court where he can get it. Where, uh, again, the, the more he goes, the more attention he's going to get. And he's going to have to work harder and harder to get his space on the court. And, and, uh, and, he, and some of them he's going to have to go get it. I mean, a couple of those passes, I'm not sure why he, he or Toby didn't catch, but uh, uh, there is no doubt that the, perim the perimeter guys are doing a better job looking for him. And uh, he, uh, and he, I mean, he was really good tonight. And uh, we, 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 now it's about consistency. Can we get it from him? Maybe not 29, but the 11 rebounds we need. And uh, that, if we could just, Somewhere in that area, every night a double double from him, we would he would be there. Tonight we should have had a bunch of guys with double digit rebounds. I mean, they took 70 shots and only made what was it nine? Nineteen. Of them. Yeah, we should have had a lot more guys with more rebounds tonight. Rick, uh, how disappointing is it that you're? had to harp on consistency as much as you've had the first 10 games of the season. It is disappointing. It is. I mean, I, I, again, at this time, with as many games as our older guys have played, it, it, it's disappointing. It is. Because uh, we believe in them, we, we have confidence, but they, they've got to do it. You know, they, they, and we got to know every night. And again, it's not about making shots. It's about playing good basketball. And defensively, I mean, we were terrible to start the second half and just and just we really did the one thing I think is a major flaw with teams that are inconsistent. You just don't respect yourself in terms of coming out and saying, yeah, this is a chance to get better. Everybody talks about respecting their opponent. I think you've got to have great respect for yourself every night. And you do that by the way you handle the game and take care of the game and do what you need to do. And when you don't do that, um, it, it gives back to you what you put into it.
it is, I mean, it, 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 it's a game that's always done that. And again, I'm just disappointed the younger guys didn't get a chance out there to play the minutes that we'd like for them to play. Rick, the 19 offensive rebounds you all gave up, was that just a result of poor effort or what you think went wrong? Well, there? some of them, when, you're, when guys are looking to score the ball, and that's what it looked like to me in the second half, you know, quick shots. Guys like, well, I'm not going to play much tonight in the second half, so I'm going to try to get my shots up or whatever. Your mindset shifts as opposed to but it, what it is. I mean, we, we scored uh, how many points in the second half? 25. It tells you we better be a good defensive team. Tells you that because if we're such a good offensive team, we should score more than 25 points in the second half. But it's a, it's a mindset, and it goes back to consistency. What what can be your mindset every night in terms of understanding what I'm supposed to do as an individual player every single night? I, it doesn't matter who you're playing, how you're playing. Can I get in the groove and do that, and then build on it every game? And um, again, that's the disappointing part. How would you assess the intensity and energy that Cam and Freddie gave you? I'm proud of both of them. You know, we knew that we got Cam a quick run because uh, he would get. He came out and he was a minute and a half. He was. He said, "Coach, I, I think I got to get my second win." And uh, but I thought Freddie was good. Freddie did the things tonight we wanted to see. He competed. Thought he was locked in. Uh, I thought his mindset was terrific. I think it shifted from thinking he's got to make something happen on the offensive end to make it get going on the defensive end. And uh, again, it goes back, uh, we had too many breakdowns with uh, the older guys, more so than the younger guys. You referenced the, the freshmen overall. What had they shown you, I guess, in practice the past couple of days? Because you referenced some bad practices from some of those guys last week. For their mental approach, when we talked about what each guy, not just we talked about all of them the other day about what we've got to improve. You know, coaches often talk about improvement, but you got to take it deeper than that. And you know, when you talk about improvement, you got to look at each guy and come up. With, okay, well, where is he right now? What do we need to do to get him better? Then you look at your team. And some of the things that we wrote down about our team, we didn't do tonight. I mean, I think we missed another what, wide, a couple of wide open layups. Uh, we got to be better there, uh, and it's. No excuse. I mean, that's that's mental toughness. You know, finish. We got to finish better. And but the wide open layups, you, you got to make them. And uh, then uh, again, talking about turnovers, uh, did a really poor job uh, second half of that. And uh, again, just the things that we talked about getting better, we didn't do that. We regressed in the second half. I forgot your question because I'm thinking about all we talked about last night. Did I answer it? Not even at all. <laughs> what are you asking again? I'll see if I can answer it. What did the young guys do in practice the last couple of days? That they, they, I thought they prepared mentally. I did. I, I thought that they weren't very good leading up to the Illinois game. And uh, we talked about it. And I told him, I said, I told you guys going in, some of you guys, I'd already made up my mind before the game, you weren't going to play strictly based on your preparation. And you better understand, you, you better learn that lesson right now. So what you do over the next day and a half, two days, to get ready for this game, we'll decide whether we're going to play you tonight. And I thought, for the most part, those guys really tried to do that. They locked in. And it's not just in practice. It's in the film room. It's everything that we talk about. It's our daily vitamins, whatever it may be. We want to see them execute at a, at a high level. And uh, again, tonight, I can somebody said he probably did it better than the older guys. Last question from John. Coach in the back here, uh, just Jonas' his aggressiveness uh, to, to draw six fouls, take 16 shots. Just what did you think of, of, of that? You had to be pleased with, with how he attacked the game tonight. Well, we, it is. And, and the other guys, like I said, what were they, what did I say, six for 23? Is that what it was? Uh, those other starters, uh, you should probably get them more. You know, and, uh, and Jonas is not a selfish player. He's not. He, uh, he, uh, I think he's still, like some of our other guys are learning, like I don't mind when he shoots three, the one in the second half was not a good decision. You know, we've gone four or five possessions without scoring, and that's where we've got to get better, knowing, okay, a slow of the game and playing the game. And in the second half, it looks like we were just shooting the ball. We were playing with a purpose. But uh, when Jonas does what we – when we do what we practice, he's going to have a lot of ample opportunities to put up numbers, be able to fight for his space. And, where he needs to be.
Thank you, Coach. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Coach.